Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about the Super Blood Moon on May the 26th. And what I plan to do in this video is to show you scripture that suggests a Day of the Lord type event and or the rapture. So, if you would, go ahead and hit that like button and be prepared to leave a comment as we go. By now, I would bet that you're already aware of the Super Blood Moon on May the 26th. And I would also bet that you are aware of the rapture scenarios of the Bible. There's a lot of people talking about these events all over YouTube and the rest of the web. But many of the verses that I'm going to show you today should be included in that discussion. So let's get started. Now, we're over here at timeanddate.com to verify that there will be a total lunar eclipse on May the 26th of the year 2021. Now, of course, blood moons are always interesting because of the prophecies of the scripture, like, for instance, Joel chapter 2, verses 31, which talks about how the moon will be turned into blood before the great day of the Lord. You see the same thing in the book of Acts chapter 2 and verse 20 and Revelation chapter 6 verse 12 which also talks about the great earthquake and goes on to talk about the media shower that all make up the great and terrible day of the Lord. This is why many people get excited when they hear about blood moons. The great day of the Lord is one of if not the most significant event that we hear about in all of scripture and every time we hear about this day it's always tied to the moon being the color of blood but let me show you something very interesting about the date may 26 2021 if we come in and we subtract 1260 days we end up on december the 13th 2017. Now, of course, the significance of the 1260 days is what we find over in the book of Revelation chapter 12 and verse 6, which is all tied to that Revelation 12 sign in the sky that we read about in verse 1 and the bride of Christ being fled into the wilderness where she stays there for 1203 score days. Now, of course, the Revelation 12 sign happened on September the 23rd, 2017, and many people started the clock on the 1,260 days on that date. And the reason why is its relationship to Rosh Hashanah in 2017. But when you look closely at the dates of Rosh Hashanah, you see that they occurred before the Revelation 12 sign in the sky. So it is not a direct relationship. That sign, as significant as it was, actually didn't fall on a feast day at all. It fell after the feast day. So what's the significance of December the 13th, 2017? That's actually the first day of Hanukkah in the year 2017. Notice how Google is telling us that it started on the evening of the 12th of December. Well, that makes December the 13th the first full day of Hanukkah. So, there are exactly 1,260 days from the first day of Hanukkah, December the 13th, 2017, to May 26, 2021. Now, I know what some of you guys are thinking. Hanukkah is a minor festival not included in the book of Leviticus chapter 23 with the other feast of the Lord. So should the coincidence that there are exactly 1,260 days from the first day of Hanukkah to the date of Passover be considered significant enough to be included in this conversation? Well, if you come to the book of John and chapter 10, which is the chapter in which the Messiah was reported to have kept the Feast of Dedication or Hanukkah, and you read all that he said in a speech during that festival, I think it is made clear that Hanukkah is definitely significant. And when you consider the X across America, that solar eclipse, 
that started in 2017 and ends in the year 2024. When you do the math on this, you see that there are 2,422 days between the eclipse in 2017 and the eclipse in 2024. And you look at the exact halfway point between those two eclipses. You see it lands on December the 14th of the year 2020. You see that that date falls in the week of Hanukkah. And when you look at what they're calling the doomsday clock or that climate clock in New York, which says that we have six years left. When you do the math on what date is pointing to, you see that it is December the 31st of 2027. And I bet you would have guessed it that that falls in Hanukkah of the year 2027. So absolutely Hanukkah is a significant date. What it appears to me that our father was trying to tell us is that 2017 was the beginning of this temple building period with 2020 being at the midpoint and the end being somewhere around 2027 or 2028, which is exactly 2000 years from the first coming of the Messiah. Okay, so now you should be wondering, what is the significance of May 26, 2021? Well, that's actually the date of second Passover in the year 2021. Now, you hear about second Passover in the book of Numbers chapter 9, when you had these individuals who were unable to keep the first Passover in the first month, were told by our father through Moses that they could keep the Passover in the second month. These people were given a second chance because of the importance of Passover. And you see the application of this ordinance in 2 Chronicles chapter 30 when King Hezekiah, who had just found out about the law, commanded all of Jerusalem to keep the Passover in the second month because they had missed it in the first month. But let's come back to that. And let me show you something significant about the year 2021. Now we're looking in the book of Daniel chapter 12, which also seems to be pointing to events around the day of the Lord. And when we look down here at at verses 11 through 13 of Daniel chapter 12 we see that he gave us the timing of a promised blessing now we've covered this several times in many videos so really briefly let me walk you through this and show you how this points to the year 2021 you see in verse 11 where he says that the abomination that maketh desolate would be set up 1,290 days after the daily sacrifice was taken away. And when we come back to chapter 1 of the book of Daniel, we can see when all of that went down. And that was during the third year of the reign of King Jehoiakim. And based on the information that we get from the scripture, in regards to the dates of the progenitors and the kings, we see that Jehoiakim became the king in 608 BC. So the third year of his reign would have been 605 BC. So if we do the math on that, adding 1,290 days from 605 BC, remembering to add one year because there was no year zero, we end up in the year 686 for the year of the abomination of desolation to be set up. This would be the same abomination of desolation that the Messiah talked about in Matthew chapter 24 verse 15. See how it's saying that this abomination of desolation will stand in the holy place? Now of course the holy place is the temple mount in Jerusalem. So when you look at what occurred on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem in 686 AD, you find that that's when they completed the Dome on the Rock. It was constructed on the exact same spot that Solomon's Temple stood. 
that's why there's so much turmoil over there in Jerusalem right now well when you come back to Daniel in chapter 12 you see that this turmoil could actually get ramped up a little bit when you look at verse 12 depending on how you define the word blessing what it's telling us is that 1335 days after the abomination of desolation we should receive some kind of blessing now I'm not sure what Daniel means by blessing but when I add 1335 years from 686 we end up in the year 2021 so could Daniel John and this blood moon all be pointing to something significant to occur on May 26 2021 well we've already established that May 26 2021 is second Passover for the year 2021 so let's go into the scripture and let's take a closer look at second Passover now like we talked about earlier the one time that we hear about somebody keeping the feast of Passover in the second month is in 2nd Chronicles chapter 30 with King Hezekiah he commanded all of Jerusalem to keep the Passover in the second month because they wasn't aware of the law in the first month and when he understood numbers chapter 9 he took advantage of it and had all of Jerusalem to keep the Passover in the second month but one thing that's truly interesting about how Hezekiah kept the Passover in the second month is that he not only commanded all of Jerusalem to keep the Passover in the second month but he invited all of Israel the other ten tribes to come to Jerusalem and keep the Passover with him in other words all of Israel for the first time since the days of Solomon were unified and kept the feast days together there in Jerusalem now of course this living parable is significant in our times because the Jews that were in Jerusalem would represent spiritual Israel of today those people who are obeying the covenant of the Lord and the other ten tribes of Israel would represent those who love the Lord but wasn't necessarily keeping the commandments and would be represented by the Gentile church today so this unification of Israel and Judah would be symbolic of the unification of spiritual Israel and Christians today and the fact that it happened on second Passover makes it extremely significant this reunification of all of the children of the Most High reminds me of the regathering that we hear about in Matthew and chapter 24 and verse 31 see where it says he will gather the elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other well when you look in the Septuagint translation of the book of Jeremiah in chapter 31 and verse 8 you see that this gathering will take place at the feast of Passover it seems to be saying the same thing that we read about over there in the book of Matthew when it's talking about regathering the remnant of Israel and Jacob from the ends of the earth but notice that this gathering that he talks about is to the feast of Passover and when we look in the book of 2nd Esdras in chapter 2 and verse 38 we see that is also talking about the feast of the Lord which would include Passover but this time it's talking about those that will be sealed during the feast of the Lord and notice how in verse 39 is talking about how they receive these glorious garments of the Lord and verse 40 also talks about these garments when it says shut up those of thine that are clothed in white and when we come to the book of Revelation chapter 7 and verse 14 we also hear about these white garments and here we hear that they are made white in the blood of the Lamb and of course it's talking about the 144,000 and the multitude that no man can number well if we jump to Revelation chapter 12 we hear about those same people and we also hear about this blood of the lamb that made their garments white and when we look at the entire chapter 7 
we see that it's talking about the ceiling of the 144,000. Well, that's what 2 Esdras was talking about, the ceiling at the Lord's feast. And Jeremiah was talking about the gathering to the feast of Passover. Now, we talked about Revelation chapter 12 earlier when we were talking about the 1,290 days. Well, notice in verse 11 that it's also talking about the blood of the Lamb. And it was through that blood of the Lamb that they overcame the wrath that you hear about in verse 12. Now, is this the great wrath that we hear about the great day of the Lord? Well, looking back over at Matthew chapter 24, where we were hearing about the elect being gathered from the four winds in verse 31. Well, if you look back in verse 29, you see that it's talking about the great and terrible day of the Lord when it's talking about the sun being darkened and the moon not giving her light. So there's definitely a connection between the regathering and the day of wrath. And when we come over and look at the book of Romans in chapter 5 and verse 9, we see that we are to be saved from his wrath by his blood. And when we look at the book of Revelation in chapter 6, when we hear about the great day of his wrath, we see some of the events that are to take place, like stars falling from heaven and great earthquakes, which all sounds very similar to what we heard about back there in Egypt during the first Passover during Moses' time. Notice over here in the book of Jubilees in chapter 49 and verse 15, where it's telling us that those who keep the feast of Passover don't have to worry about plagues or wrath or that kind of thing for the entire year in which they keep the feast of Passover. So that's what Romans in chapter 5 is talking about when it says that we are justified by his blood and saved from wrath. But how does that work? What is the connection between his blood, our atonement, our salvation, and protections from the day of wrath? Well, when we come to the book of Matthew, chapter 26, we see the Messiah and the Feast of Passover. We see that it was on the evening at the beginning of Passover that he had the communion celebration with the wine and the unleavened bread that we hear about that what they call the Last Supper. The Messiah, who was the representation of the Passover lamb, whose blood was put on the doorposts in Egypt to protect the Lord's people from the plague of the death angel, now has replaced that blood with wine. And he's telling us to drink this wine every year during the Feast of Passover so that we can have the remission of sins so that we don't have to worry about the plagues coming up on the world. So there is how we get our protection from the day of wrath. We do so by having the communion feasts on the evening of Passover. This all makes sense when we look back at the book of John and chapter 6 verses 53 through 54 when he's telling us that by partaking in the communion festival we receive eternal life and it goes on to say that those who kept the feast of Passover will be raised up at the last day well that's what's being talked about over in the book of first Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 16 when it says that the dead in Christ will rise first and in first Corinthians chapter 15 verse 52 when it's talking about the dead shall be raised incorruptible of course, those verses are what they talk about when they are referring to the rapture. But when we look back at the gospel according to John, we see that drinking the Messiah's blood and eating his flesh is necessary to be raised up during that time. So Passover is necessary for the rapture. If you want to be sure that you're going to be raptured and have eternal life, you must keep Passover. So that would be why our father gave us two chances in a year in order to get that day right. So why am I telling you all of this? Is it to scare you? 
making you think that something significant is going to happen on May the 26th of the year 2021? Absolutely not. The purpose of this video is to bring your attention to Second Passover and the importance of having the communion festival on that day. I'm not sure if anything is going to happen on May the 26th of the year 2021, but I'm absolutely sure that if you want eternal life and or want to be raptured, you're going to have to keep the Feast of Passover. So by now, I'm sure many of you are asking exactly how do you keep the Feast of Passover? And another question you should be asking is when do you keep the Feast of Passover? Because if you remember the story of the Messiah, he was crucified during the daylight hours of Passover. But they had the Last Supper on the evening before. That is because the Feast of Passover starts the evening of the 14th, which on this year would be May the 25th after sundown. That would be the time to put the blood on the doorposts so that would be the time to have the Passover communion festival and the week-long feast of unleavened bread will start on the evening of the 26th which we are required to eat unleavened bread for a week so on the evening of the 25th of May is when you want the fruit of the vine whether it be grape wine or grape juice and your unleavened bread there at your own home and you will perform a Passover ceremony reading verses that pertain to the Feast of Passover while you drink the wine and eat the bread in remembrance of the Messiah. But you can see on the top right hand corner of your screen a link to a video that gives you a lot more detail on what exactly we are to do on the festival days. You just have to replace the dates of first Passover with the dates of second Passover, but you will perform the acts the same way. So check out that video and if you would hit the like button on this video and leave us a comment. Make sure you have that subscription button pushed and the bell notification button selected so that you can get future videos that we'll put out between now and the Feast of Passover as it is the focus of our channel to produce videos focusing on the dates and the specifics of the feast days. And with that, I'm going to say Shalom.